If you work in a laboratory, you can spend several hours a day using a pipette, often at an intensive pace. No one has to tell you that operating a pipette can be a real pain, especially in the neck, back, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand. The bad news is that long hours of pipetting can result in discomfort and have long-term physical effects on your body. The good news is that there is a lot you can do to protect yourself and avoid injury. This video will demonstrate some simple ways to set up your laboratory workspace so you can work safely and efficiently. You will learn how to position your work materials and what you may be doing right or wrong when using your pipette. So stay put because the following few minutes could save you a lifetime of discomfort. Setting up your laboratory bench properly will help alleviate musculoskeletal discomfort and avoid injuries that can develop over time. Repetitive, forceful gripping combined with awkward postures can affect your nerves, tendons, ligaments, joints, and spinal discs. Most laboratories have cutouts or open spaces under the work surface. Always try to work in one of these areas so you can stand or sit close to your bench. If you stand, consider the use of foot rails and floor mats to reduce fatigue. When sitting or standing by your workbench, make sure you can pipette at a comfortable height and reach. We call this the preferred or comfort zone. It extends between your waist and shoulders and includes the space between your body and hand when you make a sweeping motion with your elbows by your sides. If you cannot adjust your bench height, consider using a chair that you can adjust. Set the height of your chair so that the bench is at or below elbow height. Use a foot ring or foot rest to support your feet. Then push your hips back so they are as far back as possible in the chair. Your back should make good contact with the back of the chair. If you lean forward to reach the bench, adjust the angle of the backrest to provide back support. Supporting the middle part of your back is important if you do a lot of leaning and reaching. If you have armrests, adjust the height so your arms are supported and your shoulders relaxed. Adjust the armrests to just below the level of your forearms. If your armrests cannot be adjusted and interfere with your work, consider removing them. If you work in a fume hood or biosafety cabinet, try to adjust your chair to work comfortably. Sit-stand chairs can help you by allowing you to sit closer, with your hips and knees at an angle of about 60 degrees rather than at right angles. Adjust the sashes as much as possible to increase easy access into the hoods while assuring safety. Placing regularly used items within a comfortable distance from where you sit or stand can eliminate odd twists and turns that lead to muscle soreness, strains, and back aches. Pull up close to work materials. Set up vials, tips, and receptacles at heights and angles that are easy to reach. Try to use shorter length pipettes, tips, tubes, and containers whenever possible. Turntables, central waste receptacles, and platforms can help workflow and reduce reach. Several musculoskeletal risks are associated with pipetting. Learn to recognize and avoid them. Start by selecting the best pipette for the job. Here are some things to think about. Choose a pipette that is a good match for the size and shape of your hand. Look for a lightweight model that you can comfortably grasp. Models that are slightly smaller than the diameter of your hand are easier to grip. Finger hooks are useful for resting your hand during the pipette cycle. This can reduce tendon inflammation and nerve compression, which in turn can reduce the risk of nerve injuries and tendonitis. 
consider how hard it is to constantly insert tips. If a tip doesn't seal properly, you will need to pound or even hand tighten it. This is extra work you don't need to do. Keep the tip rack close to your body and don't use any more force than you need to load it. Removing the tip can be worse than loading it. The ejection forces of a traditional pipette can place you at high risk for injury, especially if you pipette for long periods of time. Tip ejection forces average 4 kilograms. Studies recommend maximum force levels of about 2 kilograms. If your pipette requires high force, take lots of breaks to give your thumb a rest and reduce risk exposure. Blowout force often exceeds tip ejection force. The lateral pinch strength of females is about 7 kilograms and about 10 for men. Most people cannot work at their peak strength very long without injury. Studies suggest that workers should stay under 30% of their maximum strength level when working for prolonged periods. Newer pipette designs with reduced plunger activation and tip ejection forces make it possible to stay below high risk force levels. When choosing a pipette, notice where the controls are located. Consider how far you have to extend your thumb to operate them. The further the thumb position from the palm, the greater the strength required to pinch and press controls. Control position, size, shape, and surface texture are all factors to take into account when choosing a pipette. Volume adjustment controls are as important to consider as plunger controls. Recent studies have shown that volume adjustment requires the highest level of muscle activity during pipetting. Make sure the volume adjustment dial is easy to grip and requires minimum revolutions to adjust the volume. Use of proper pipetting techniques can reduce the time and effort needed to accomplish your work. If you have never been trained in use of a pipette, ask for formal training. Issues such as immersion depth and angle, cadence, tip position, and force can make a big difference in both accuracy and efficiency. Keep pipettes clean and in good repair. Always match the pipette to the task. Consider specialty pipettes such as latch hook, magnetic, multi-channel, and electronic models when appropriate for the tasks you must complete. For example, use electronic or multi-channel pipettes for repetitive dispensing or when filling multi-well plates. Whenever possible, Rotate pipetting tasks with other coworkers or intersperse other tasks in your routine. Try to limit continuous pipetting to 20 minutes. If you have to work for longer periods, take 3 to 5 minute micro breaks every 20 to 30 minutes. Try to utilize gentle hand, arm, and shoulder stretches during these breaks. If you spend several hours a day pipetting, you know how challenging it can be. Remember the general guidelines we have presented. Be aware of your posture when working. Set up your bench to avoid forward leaning and reaching. Limit static and repetitive work by rotating tasks, taking breaks, and moving around. Select the best tool for the job and keep them in proper working order. There is much you can do to protect yourself from fatigue and injury. Be proactive, work safely, and take care of your body.